He never, and that's not always across the board in this town. <laughs> he, he never left anybody. He stood up for his friends, and it wasn't that we just loved him. He loved his friends and took care of them. And unlike most of this town, which is transactional, you weren't just his friend when you were in. If you're out of office, he still called you, and he still was... He's just was loved because he was such a lover of, he, of his he friends. Had, he had that reservoir of loyalty that so few people have. And I would think especially in this city where I don't live, but I've always likened it to what I call elevator loyalty, that you and I are going from the sixth floor to the first floor, and I'm your friend, and I'm very loyal. We get out, you go that way, I go that way, and I'm killing you half a block away. Tim was loyal. He was loyal. You were his friend. He admired you or he liked you or whatever. He would remain loyal to you through thick and thin, through Don, Don Imus. He, he was loyal to Don. He understood Gwen uh, yeah. and learned from that experience, as we all did. Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah. but it, but just, and loyalty is such a rare commodity. Well, know, speaking you know, of loyalty, um, uh, we all know that Tim Russert grew up in South Buffalo, working class family. He wrote about it with uh, Big Russ and me. And uh, even though he rose to the heights, being one of the most important journalists in America, a guy who could drive the political debate in this country, uh, had all the good fortune that goes with the success that he had. He never forgot his Buffalo roots. This is the Buffalo News. Uh, I think it's mute testimony to how they felt about him in his hometown. And we thought we would share with you just a few of the hundreds of thousands of references to Buffalo and everything connected <laughs> to Buffalo that we heard on this broadcast. <laughs> For Big Russ, his buddies back in Buffalo who helped make this country great, for the city of Buffalo, and for all the underdogs in this country and around the world, go you Buffalo Bills. Go Sabres. Bring it home. We want the cup. How about those Boston College Eagles? On to the Sweet 16. Go Eagles. Go Bills. Get those skins. Sorry about those Bills, but how about those Sabres? St. Albans Bulldogs, 25. The Gonzaga Eagles, 20. Yesterday, God was not purple. He was wearing bulldog <laughs> blue. And hey, Buffalo Sabres, nice job. Ten in a row. Make me proud. Go Bills, squish the fish, hold the emails. I know dolphins are mammals, but, you know, squish the fish. If it's Sunday, it's meet the press, and oh, yes, go Bills. <laughs> you know, Tom. He was beyond shameless. <laughs> about the but he loved my feelings. I'm telling you, Saturday night, I'm watching the LSU football game. And then score a touchdown, 10.30. I look on myself, hey, yeah. he said, can you believe LSU just scored? I'm so happy for you. And I felt like, man, you got to go to sleep. you got to do the show tomorrow. If, if you were pulling for a team and you were a friend of his, he'd be pulling for the team. You know, everybody. Right. He said, Jacob has to have to un Thursday night, I'm in New York. The Celtics-Lakers game is going on out on the coast. The Celtics, phenomenal comeback. I'm trying to fall asleep in a hotel room. Phone rings. You know, hey, buddy. You see what's going on out there? You see the run they're putting on? He just... And that was, when I talk about that, that kind of little boy, he had enthusiasm for the Bills, but if you had a team, he followed his friends' team. And, and I'm in Tiger Stadium, Jacob Haskell makes, makes a first down in my phone rings you in know, the middle of 92,000 well, people. Yeah. 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 Even at one point when he asked me, what are you going to do after Lincoln? I said, what can I do anything after Lincoln? I certainly can't go back to Millard Fillmore. And he said, no, wait, Millard Fillmore came from Buffalo. Right. Don't say bad things about Millard Fillmore. <laughs> You know that's how I got hired here. I, I, the real reason I got my job at NBC is because I had lived for four formative years in Buffalo, oh. New York. <laughs> to have well, with my, my, my my best experience with him in the whole uh, Buffalo Bills thing is that he invoked God uh, at the end of Meet the Press when the Bills were playing the Cowboys in the Super Bowl in Pasadena. And he said something to the effect that if there is a God in heaven, the Bills will win it. And I went to him and I said, look, I think you crossed the line. <laughs> and he said, no, I think I feel strongly about that. You know, I'm, and I'm ur urging everybody to pray. And, and he said, I've invoked the entire Catholic Church trying to get the Bills across the line. And so we go to the game. And, of course, the Bills get completely blown out of the Rose Bowl by Dallas. Um, and Tim was walking dejectedly with Luca to side. It was about 10 at the time over to the NBC party. And I went to Tim and I said, you know what this proves? And he said, what? I said, God is a Baptist. <laughs> 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 and to Tim's credit, he told that story wherever he appeared. He could never mention Scott Norwood around town. Oh. No. <laughs> wide, wide right in the Super Bowl. Bills lose to the New York Giants. <laughs> Field goal kicker. Um, well, you know, the other thing is that 
he's what they call in the sports business a homer. I mean, he, you know, he was for the home team. It was for your team because it was the home team. It was for when Luke goes to Boston College, it becomes right. the greatest institution right. in American life, and the <laughs> Eagles got more possible attention uh, than they could have imagined. Can we just share something else? Uh, Tim had a 50th birthday eight years ago. And this is a distinguished American historian in a way that you have never, ever seen her before. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, Doris Kearns, va va boom. Jeff, you're going to see this on Imus. I like this on here. <laughs> Did you, oh did you sing? I had to sing. You know how Marilyn Monroe sung, Happy Birthday, Mr. President. So I had to sing, Happy Birthday, Mr. Moderator. Oh, God. No, it was the most embarrassing moment. I thought, I'll never be able to do it. And sometimes you put that stupid thing around your neck and you have a wig on, you become another person, at least for a few moments. 